Hello, friends, and welcome back to the Foundation. We're heading to base camp for the final of the four locks. I'm assuming that we are actually going... Oh, no, I think we're probably going over there. That being said, there is something down here in the dark. Oh, I forgot to, uh, I was going to clear some of these out in between episodes, but I didn't. It's down here then. It's, v it's very dark. Oh, those are the, um, yeah, those are the pillars, the tree roots, tree trunks, trunks. That's the word I'm after. Uh, I think I actually need to go this way. Uh, up more? Oh. Cha ching. Right. Did I say. Ah. Yes, I did. I do like how the colour palettes shift. Alright, it's going up. And across. Is there anything? No. I was just wondering if there was going to be anything up and back that we could go and see. A secret. For example, I do like how it covers the camera with stuff. Oh, oh, hi, friends. Clonk. Nice. Too far. Okay, so on those corridors like this that we've seen already, I assume I just didn't notice the extrusion things. Base camp. Is this where um, researcher Ash set up? For the very first part of the expedition, I wonder. I also wonder whether we're going to get to see, to see Northmore. There's a guy up there. That's not what I meant to do. Oh, that's a barrier. This guy's a big guy. Yeah. Let's throw this at him. Yeah, he's got a lot of health. 
plonk. Interesting that his shield's not coming back. sound, isn't it? Has it always played that sound? I don't think it has. Um... I think that might be the um, the aim assist messing me up for those. Oh, hello. Random person. Okay. So we've got fire break going on over here. Interesting. Oh. There's something behind that history. I do like the fire break as a concept. It looks cool. As much as anything else. Uh. Okay. Try that again. Uh, where was the hiss barrier? Are we going... Hmm, can we get over to that? This is just me being stupid. Sorry, I'll cut this out if this is a... Waste of time. Oh, what the? I. Why? We read a note about that guy. Doesn't seem to be anything we can do with it for the moment. Oh, that's not the right button. So, 
Mental note. Cat statue. Data entry. And filing. Shift account part one. To whoever finds this, I am containment processes designer Jean Gibbs, and I'm writing this to document the largest building shift to ever occur. Here are the facts. A considerably large section of the containment sector, including the processes and protocols offices, our research facilities, and a fair chunk of the firebreak, has been yanked down to a chasm that reaches far below lobby level. I think... It was a violent shift, and I regret to report several casualties. Injuries were sustained by all, but many of us, myself included, are still mobile. We set up a base camp and started triaging. Triaging. Tri yes, that. There are little supplies. We explored our surroundings and found caverns of all things. And found caverns of all things. Yeah. Maybe we're in some kind of cave threshold, like the quarry? Wherever we are, we're not the first... There were some rusty power cores, old lights, signs, infrastructure. What was this area used for? Why did they seal it off? Why have we never heard of it? More importantly, how are we going to get out? All good questions. What the? A purple? <gasps> Level six? They've uh, infinite. They've added in an extra tier of mods. That I did not know. Kiev? AWE 37. A series of reverberating sounds observed in downtown Kiev with no clear point of origin. 2011. The event was witnessed by the city's general public. Mental and physical symptoms were reported, including aphasia, sleep paralysis, and, ex and excess redacted in the reported individuals. Due to the brief nature of the event, overseas bureau agents were not able to respond while it was active. Immediately upon arrival, agents collected audio recordings taken by local witnesses. All bureau monitoring stations located at global junctions of acoustic amplification were directed to monitor any auditory events of similar pitch, wavelength and duration in an effort to trace echoes or epicenters. In the following weeks, similar cases were reported from both various oops from both various amateur sources and bureau stations in major cities across the globe. The subsequent events diminished in volume and frequency per each occurrence. The event is believed to be generated by planar friction, though this is not confirmed. See file 71849062 for full hypothesis. Planar friction. So, the astral plane grating. Director Faden here. I need a ranger dispatched to my position. Let's put him down! Uh, how do you get here? Oh, look! I'm trying to give my guy the opportunity to finish some of these off, but he's being really slow. Um, so now we've got a new tier. Get rid of all the level four ones in that case. So what was this? Ammo recovery on evade use. Meh.
Still, worth looking out for. It's just a little bit too dark in some of these areas. Hidden location uncovered. <laughs> right. So where? Decent set of office uh, rules. Pretty certain those have been on the same thing across the game. What are these cubicles? Aha! Is the... Oh! Who's he shooting at? <laughs> Polaris is not impressed. What the hell? Oh shit. Um Correspondence? Computer program. Dear House of Representatives, my husband Francis read an article before he died about how the universe was really just a computer program. He believed it. I thought it sounded silly, but now I think he was right. Francis was hit by a car a few months ago. A drunk driver. I don't think it was supposed to happen. The neighbour's son, Jeremy, broke one of our windows with the football a week before Francis died. Francis yelled at Jeremy for it. It was a bit harsh. This is important because I see Jeremy on his computer through their living room window. He's on it all the time. His mother says he's a computer whiz. I think Jeremy is operating the computer programme and he changed the universe so that driver would hit Francis. He did it to get back at Francis for yelling at him. Is there a way to change the computer and make Francis come back? I have some money if it's expensive. I don't know how these things work. I don't care if Jeremy gets in trouble or not. I just want Francis to come home. Jeremy and I were very happy together. I can feel him not being here. And I know it's not right. What? Uh What am I doing here? <laughs> the eternal question. Oh. doesn't want to show you the seams um that's really weird what was the trophy that we actually got discover the astral plane restroom i did and it was weird
Very odd. Ah, this is the... Yeah. Wonder if we can get over to that one. Is it on the map? Yeah, we're going around that way. I had to turn then to check. <laughs> oh, I want to check all the bathrooms now. Just to see if there's any other links back. Alright, that's the way forward. I'm also on the lookout, of course, for more story stuff. Like those documents there. Beep, beep. Locker room. And a shelter. Let's open that up. Grab this. His life is in your hands. Kiev Supplement. Recordings of the audio phenomena were uploaded onto the internet shortly after the event. These records circulated rapidly on popular message boards. A communications department utilised this exposure by creating sky trumpet hoax videos and posting related theories to spread confusion and draw attention away from the event's paranatural origin. Industrial noise, particularly the sound of metal drilling, was found to be a Widely accepted explanation. Theories about the sounds emanating from the Earth itself, known as seismic hum, emerged from the public itself and were encouraged by the Bureau to generate further misdirection and eventual public disinterest. Witnesses of the event were monitored discreetly afterwards. Observed symptoms were consistent with redacted deprivation, but subsided, oops, but subsided after 12 to 15 days. The length of the symptoms directly correlated to the individual's proximity, unsheltered, to the supposed epicentre. One linked, although accidental, casualty can be listed. See report read the effects of planar friction on hearing aids in file 14 200 10 10. Hmm. You're listening to America Overnight. A beacon in the darkest recesses of possibility for more than 29 years. 29 years. We have another letter from a listener. This one's unsigned, but postmarked from Toledo. It says, Dear America Overnight, I have the most wonderful appliance for your listeners. It is a miracle of God. A fondue set. A fountain. A blessed gift. What? Blessed is spelled with a capital B. Hmm. Go on, they write. Dive on in. It is molten hot. Perfect for me. Is, is this an advert? No signature. As far as I know, no fondue set was sent to us here at the studio. Just this letter. Wait. I think there's something else in the envelope. Some kind of black powder. With white shards in it? Bone, maybe? Karen, what is this? Karen? We're on the air, Karen. Where are you? What? Why is this powder in the booth? Is this... is this ash? Oh. Oh, God. Karen? How do I cut to commercial? What?
Well, that was weird. Was it like... That, that was... Yeah. Super weird. I mean, all of those radio shows are... Uh, Okay. I guess. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm I'm trying to speculate in my head about what that stuff was. Shift account part two. Gibbs reporting in. It has been eight days since the collapse, and still no sign of any rescue efforts. The bureau is either completely unaware of our situation or are incapable of helping us. Or maybe it's intentional. How many times have we seen the Bureau not give two shits about its own hard-working staff when they go missing in this place? How many times did we let it slide, thinking, oh, at least it wasn't me? Too many, I'm ashamed to admit. Anyway, there have been some developments. Strange crystals have begun growing through the walls. They seem to block some corridors, but not others. The path to the caves is always left open, but we're not sure why. Luckily, the crystals keep out the astral spike. One's been hounding us for days. John, Nikolai and Sarah went to try and find a radio, but never came back. We think the spike got them. They think it's hunting us. Doug says spikes only exist in the astral plane. So what the fuck is it doing here? If we get out of here, I'm hiring a lawyer. These are unsuitable working conditions. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hold on. Astral spike through this door. Um. Okay, so something messed up is through there and we're going to have to go and deal with it. Because we are the director of the Fedora Bureau of Control. And I need to sneeze. <coughs> Ooh. <laughs> right, oh, hay fever is doing a number on me. It's very early in the morning at the time I'm recording this, because my sleep pattern's been messed up by the fact that during the daytime, my hay fever is so bad I can barely see. I thought it would be better at night, and it has been, but my eyes are still really itchy. So I've not been able to do much recording. What is this altered item, I wonder? It's very dark in here. I should hire someone who builds smaller machines. <laughs> Uh, those look like power cube repositories. No. There we go. Oh, I'm going to need to throw them in, am I? Right. 
You can go in there. You're a ladder. <laughs> that is not what... I told you I'm no good at aiming these. Uh, what? Thank you. Ching. The zoom altered item transport at designated terminal. I don't see any altered item. Oh, there it is. What is it? A camera? So that's the altered item. Looks pretty secure. Smash! <laughs> okay. Um, how am I getting through there? Or am I not? This machine is sparking a lot. Is that a shortcut back, I wonder? Probably. Okay. I do like the level design of this game, even if I don't like the map. And I really don't much like the map. Hmm. Have a bureau full day. Really? Somebody programmed it to say that. Shocking. A fight. Man, he's firing a lot of grenades. I need to take a look actually at uh, what I've got equipped for the shotgun because it seems to be surprisingly weak even if you're right up close and personal uh, where am I going? can't get up there but can get through this window I'm assuming nice ah this is the other side of that door Yeah, the, the auto locking is really weird for uh, for that. Yes, okay, that's how we get through to there. Okay, so transit access. Uh Takes us to an elevator. This also takes us to an elevator and also some of the doors. Randomly, some mold. New language for immediate publication. I learned a brand new language. The fish taught me. You probably don't believe me, so I will prove it. See? 
Please publish this letter and maybe other fish speakers will get in touch. I'll be able to read my address, even if you can't. Dibini Vogue. Larry Humbert. What? <laughs> I, I love this game's bizarreness. And the worst thing is, of course, that the... Well, I said the worst thing. The... F the fun part is that it's only as bizarre as humanity. <laughs> Brian. Welcome to another episode of Brian's Movie Den with me, the ever lovable Brian Henner. Hi, Brian. <laughs> so I want to talk about a new film I found at Movie Night. That's Night with a K, the mecca for VHS aficionados in the greater Dallas area. Yeehaw! The movie is called Delivery Disaster. Uh huh. <laughs> we open in Media Res. A mailman drives a truck of full of packages down in uh, an endless American neighborhood as a pack of rabid dogs chase behind. Now, these dogs are nothing like my mom's, my stepmom's Corgi Chuck. These were some real nightmare hellhounds. <laughs> I like the extra sound effects being added. The dogs keep pace with the mail truck, tearing chunks out of the driver's legs and arms. Nice! Each package he throws out the door is marked by his bloody handprint. He screams in pain and confusion, and this goes on and on until the movie just abruptly ends. There aren't even any credits, which is a pretty bold choice. Yeah. Is this film a commentary on how our 9 to 5 jobs are killing us, or how hostile the modern world is to outdated concepts? This guy's like voice is kind of whiny, and, and he talks like this all the time. And how no task can ever be really done. There are lots of ways to interpret it. But for now, let's get to the part you're all waiting for. It's score time. Score. <laughs> score. I give this film a four out of five, only because the actor frequently broke the fourth wall by looking into the camera and shouting at it, like he was shouting at the audience. A little too on the nose for me, but I did enjoy it, and I recommend you check out other films produced by Blessed Pictures. Bike Hard and Coffee Bullet are the only others I found but this little art house studio certainly knows how to push the boundaries of Western cinema. <laughs> and a friendly reminder that there will be no new episode next week, as I'm oh, no. my aunt in Delaware for Thanksgiving. Thanks for listening, all you Brian fans. And remember, we all love movie magic, but don't forget about the you magic. Until next time. Thanks, Brian. That was really weird. Welcome to another episode of Brian's Movie Den with me, the ever lovable Brian Hinner. Uh, I, I wonder if that was less a movie and, and, and more some found footage. Um, either way, kind of weird. Right. Uh, I just want to check one tiny thing. Properly trained. I guess I pass. I am very properly trained. I thought this was going to link up to the mold, but I'm apparently incorrect. Uh, ooh. Danger, keep off tracks. I remember that camera. Oh yeah. How the hell did it get out? That was ace. I really enjoyed that. I wouldn't have wanted to do it like a couple of times, but I enjoyed it for what it was. Plus, achievements. Sorry, trophies. We're playing on the PlayStation, aren't we? Okay, so that was definitely worth coming back for. See, I thought that was going to link up to the, the, the lower part of the mould thing. But I suppose it was further back, wasn't it? 
Right, let's get on with what we were actually supposed to be doing. Movie camera supplements? Oh yeah, we got a couple of things there. Movie camera procedures. Action Max. AI-8-O-U-E. The item should be isolated from any person or event that is objectively interesting since its effect is activated by the presence of dramatic incidents. The movie camera used to make commercial feature films. Internal mechanisms are unremarkable. Subjects near the item will often experience a talked version of reality resembling the heightened drama and action of a movie. Whether these events are localised alternate realities or products of hallucination is currently unknown. Additionally, the item seems to record footage from these incidents and creates VHS copies edited in the style of short films. During their investigation, agents learned that a podcast titled Brian's Movie Den had reviewed the item-generated movie Delivery Disaster. The podcast creator, Brian Henneman, was taken for questioning. The staff of Movie Night, the store Mr Henneman rented the film from, were also questioned to no effect. 2016. Interesting. Um... Where was the other one? Action Max Camera Supplement. The item first came to the Bureau's attention after a hospitalised mailman from Redacted, Arkansas. 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 Spot the Brit. Arkansas claimed his injuries had been caused by a movie camera. Further investigation connected the incidents to AIA 80, which was being shipped in a mail truck at the time. The package cam was later found in an empty warehouse. The return address led agents to a peer box located in the San Fernando Valley belonging to a company called Blessed Pictures. Whether Blessed Pictures is involved in the creation and dissemination of the items VHS films is unknown. See Investigation 13 HQ 612. The following is a list of all known films believed to have been shot by AIATUE. Shoot First, Die Last, Unreleased. Coffee Bullet, Billy's First Car, By Card. Delivery Disaster. Item was used in the filming of an unreleased western in 1968 on the Italian island of Sardinia. Cast member was killed during an on-set accident stopping production. It is believed that Blessed Pictures bought the camera when equipment from the shoot was sold at auction. Weird. Weird. More mods. Anything in here? No. Hmm. Okay then. For the fire break. Oops, that's not the interrupt button. Shift to camp part three. It's clear no one is coming. We're running out of ideas and supplies. We tried going into the caves to find anything edible, but all we found were noxious gases and endless pits. The crystals only let us go one way, even though we could see the caves branched out. We did find some weird spiky pillar. I only got a glimpse of it before the astral spikes attacked. There were a few of them this time. We lost a lot of people. There's only six of us left. We didn't ask for this. We didn't want to come down here. I'm convinced something brought us here. The other sound going nuts, but it's clear this that this was no house shift. Shifts slide a bathroom a section and over or rotate a hallway. They don't drop full divisions into some caves. We were brought here. I know it. But for what? Why tear us away from our lives just to torture us? If this is some sort of test or mission, then there's some advice for whoever's running it. Give out clearer instructions next time. I hope these notes are a good read for whatever ranger files them. Fuck you. Put that in your report. So, something was... testing? Maybe... the board? Marshall blew up the nail? What the hell was she thinking? Oh, so the nail is the connection to the board and it was originally intact. So it was keeping things together. 
it, well, arguably it was keeping things separate. But with it destroyed, that distance can no longer be maintained. So the nail is a kind of fire break all of its own, I guess. All right. This is the last one. Um, color bleed. I can't believe Marshall's brilliant plan was to blow up the nail. Mm. <laughs> and she thought I wasn't ready. There's more to it than that, though. I keep thinking I've got to worry about these bits growing back, but I don't think they do. Yeah. Oh, no, never mind. There we go. That was a little bit, uh... Yeah, I was right about the shape of the nail. It's got the inverted... There. Easy as pie. Didn't I? Nail, leave, end. Oh, that's where we came in. Ah. Looks like, ooh. Holy shit. Oh, jeez. I mean, this isn't good. Oh, thank God. But this is a different location from where we were originally. What? should be better now not worse emily will know i hope yeah assuming what we've done is a good thing i keep doing that nail this way new mission the pyramid Speak to Pope. Oh. Hello. Shiny reward. Oh. A whole blue mod. Oh, we're really high up. Let's see if I can land on top of the nail. <laughs> because of course I do. Jesse, we need to oh, it doesn't allow us. That's disappointing. Oh, oh, it's going to put me straight into a cutscene. What did you do? What is causing these tremors? I thought you could tell me. Uh oh. I completed the four rituals just like the board told me to. The astral bleed should have stopped. It has stopped. The nail is repaired. But we have a new problem. Oh, great. My analysis of the nail indicates that it is literally a piece of the astral plane. Or possibly a vessel containing the astral But plane. what? Or both. Either way, right now both dimensions are vibrating at completely incompatible frequencies. The spatial friction they are generating is incalculable. It's going to destroy both planes. Oh, good. I messed this all up. No, we... Maybe Marshall was right to destroy the nail. I should have left it in pieces. No, then the astral plane would still be leaking in. Sometimes there's no right answer, Jesse. So are we screwed either way? No. I need to fix this now. Yeah, but... I'll just... I'll figure something out. No, we should really make a plan. The tremors are originating from directly below us, but we don't know what... Perfect. 
I'll head down and take care of whatever's going on. Just do what you can from here. Jesse, you can't just... I have to, Emily. I'm the director. This is on me. Oh, dear Lord. Okay. Oh. Don't be a stranger. There's a massive hole there, which wasn't there before. Huh. Okay. Uh, I guess next time we will find out what is at the bottom of that exciting pit. Yay. Looking forward to that. But yeah, that, that it's kept me guessing. The nature of the relationships with these things has kept me guessing. And I like that. I like having to, to try and piece things together and, and figure out what is going on. Not that I've really got a clue. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. Hope you've enjoyed this look at the Foundation DLC. Um, I should probably go and look up, actually, how many more missions there are in this. But if we go for a three-act structure, I suspect we've got the Foundation, the Nail, and then the Pyramid. And this will be the climax of the DLC. I guess. Don't know. We'll find out next time. Until next time. Stay safe out there. Have yourselves a wonderful day. And cheerio. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, why not click the like button and consider subscribing. Remember, you can ring the bell notification icon to get notified when new videos go live. And until next time, cheerio.